Hey, Vinyl Community, Jeff here again. And so, yes, I wanted to show something that I finally found in the wild. Um, something I've been wanting for a while, but it's not one of those things where I necessarily want to go search it online and find it and buy it. It was one of those things where if I run across it, I run across it. Well, this past weekend, I don't even know how we found this out. Um, I don't know. We were headed to the other side where we live in Virginia Beach. Um, if you cross through the tunnel, you go to the peninsula, the Virginia Peninsula, which is where I was raised. And I know of, oh, that's right. There was one record store that I showed about a year ago that just opened up over there that we went to. And uh, so I remember showing that video and I've been there a couple of times and uh, I thought, Let's go over there and check out that record store. It's been a while since we've been there. Actually, the reason that we were going over there is because a couple weeks ago, I had my class reunion for my school, and I won an award there uh, at the reunion for one of the early registers, and they gave me a $50 gift card to a restaurant that is on that side of the water. So I said, let's cruise over there to my wife. We had some time off. Let's cruise over there. And use a $50 gift card because we don't want to hold on to it for too long. And while we're there, we'll hit the record store. And I'm like, she's like, okay, sure. So we headed that way. But then somehow I did a search and found that there was another record store over on that side of the water I was unaware of that literally opened about a year ago in 2023 sometime that I was totally unaware of in a different part of town from where the other one was. So we went there and I'm like, let's go check it out. So new store been there for like I say less than a year I guess or roughly a year and we went and checked it out so I went in there not a huge store fairly small but lots of stuff lot I think most of the stuff uh, uh not most uh, quite a bit of used stuff um, whereas unlike a store I went to recently I'll tell them in a different story about how they didn't have much used stuff and so I'm flipping through. they actually had a metal section and I'm flipping through the metal section and lo and behold this caught my eye now I wasn't sure price-wise if I wanted to grab it, but, you know, I kind of checked it. And, it, again, it was kind of one of those things where it's like, do I really want to spend that money for it? It wasn't a horrible amount of money, but more than I like to spend. But, anyway, enough of that. Enough rambling about that. Finally found a copy of the Breaking the Chains album, the original German import release with Don on the cover, listed as Don Dokken, before the album later was released as the band Dokken. Now... There's the only there's no real big significance to this other than be neat to have a copy when it was the Don Dokken album of sorts. Um, it was released overseas in '81 under the name Don Dokken, and in America they got signed to uh, Elektra and they got it released in America in '83 as just Dokken. Now that's the version I grew up with. This is the repress that came out a couple years ago on gold but this is the album i grew up with uh starting in 83 when it came out we bought it and so this is the only one i've ever known and have uh, ever owned and you know and as the vinyl community goes around and you start seeing people showing things you learn if there is a version out there like this and so it's always kind of been in the back of my mind that i'd like to have a copy that didn't know if i'd ever see one but lo and behold boom in the wild right there new store there it is and so I said yes. Now, interesting about this, and I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg. But anyway, um, there are apparently more than one different version of this. And so the version I've got, the label says, you can see it there, the label says Dokken. So the cover says Don Dokken. The label says Dokken. And there is a version out there that says Don Dokken on both. They both came out apparently in 81. Discogs doesn't describe which came first. I kind of assume that Don Dokken when came out first. I don't know why there would even be one that says Dokken. I don't know if it was a transition thing. But apparently they both seem to have come out same year. So I don't I, I don't know the whole story there. Um, but I found a copy, so I grabbed it. Now the one difference between this and the English ver the American version that came out later. The song titles are, are in a different order in some ways, but um, same band, same album, same recording as far as I know. I don't, I don't hear any difference as far as that goes. I, you know, it's got the same characters and everything on here. However, the U.S. version, the last song on the U.S. version is Paris is Burning, recorded live. And the 
original album has got the song Paris on here and it's not live. So there is a song that's a little different in the sense that I grew up only knowing the live version. And so now we have, you know, I have a copy here with the studio track of the song Paris. Uh, and even on the CD, and even on the CD, I think this might have been a reissued CD. But yeah, you know, so it's the, the Paris is burning live in 82. So that, you know, the album came out in 83 in the U.S., but the original was in 81. So this is the studio one. And then they record it live. And I, I don't know exactly why they would have swapped that out. I don't know if they thought it was better. But now we've got the U.S. version that has Paris live. And we've got the original version that's got Paris as a studio track. Now, I think somewhere on some album I have, I believe I have the studio track. I'm not sure. But this is neat. Thought it was neat. Glad to have. I gotta admit, it'd be nice if I had one that had the logo on the label that said Don Dokken, but I'm not too picky. Um, the price wasn't horrible. It was just, you know, I, I'm not a huge collector, and so I, I wouldn't want to pay a lot for this. But you know, I checked it online, and uh, it, it'd be tough to get one for much different of a price. So I guess I, I did good. I'm not. I'm not frustrated. It wasn't like I paid like fifty dollars more than I could have got one online. I'm not frustrated like that. Um, the store prices were actually pretty decent on a lot of things. He had a lot of other stuff that was priced pretty high. Um, some some rare stuff. Um, and then, anyway, that I had to pass on. He had he had uh, Dream Theater, the music on vinyl reissue of uh, I think it was Images and Words. Uh, totally for Donna Blake. One of the first two James Labrie Dream Theater albums. That is hard to find now. Music on vinyl reissued that came out a few years ago, and he was asking 180 bucks for it. You know, um, kind of a tough thing to do. Now, the box set for that Dream Theater set came out where those have been reissued, but now the box set has been sold out for like the month it came out. And so, you know, the prices are astronomical on that, but that's giving me hope that maybe after the box sets dwindle down, they'll release them individually. But anyway, some cool stuff for the store. Some things that made me scratch my head saying, how is he getting this stuff? But um, anyway, more to show of what I found, but this was the prize possession of what I got. And that's it for this one. I'll talk to you later about the other one. See you later. Rock on and rock hard.